The next part is uh, take off the model and managing takeoff, uh, or to organize your model based on quantity takeoff. What we'll do here is to, uh, to analyze the model based takeoff items uh, using um, highlighting and isolating elements. Uh, we'll create some new takeoff items, um, assign some of the elements to the new takeoff item. We'll change an element type, uh, so if you're not happy with the element type that was created automatically based on the, the BIM application's element properties, you can always change that. Uh, we'll use uh, filters uh, to create a, a focused view on the model. And last but not least, we'll review the, uh, the, the quantities by location using the locations that were derived from the first activated BIM uh, project. Back into Office, and uh, as you can see, we are already in the Takeoff Manager module. You can always switch to a different module by right-clicking on the Workflow Panel header. Uh, we need to be in Takeoff Manager, so we'll keep that active. Uh, in the next step, we will uh, switch to, uh, to Cost Planner, and that will change the, the content of the, uh, the Workflow Panel. Uh, let's select the Takeoff Model Workflow item. As you can see in this list, short list, because we only selected one property to use to be used for the uh, creation of the initial set of takeoff items. We have walls, rectangular columns, uh, slabs, and rectangular beams. And selecting any of these items will highlight uh, the uh, corresponding geometry inside the model. You see in uh, in, in uh, in the, uh, when I activate the model view is that the uh, selected takeoff item is highlighted as well. That is a characteristic in the vehicle office environment. Everything that is selected in one view is highlighted in the other. Uh, so that way you always get an indication of, um, of the, the, the data that you, you worked with earlier. Um, let's create a new takeoff item. I want to isolate this, this part, and I also want to create a new foundation element using the, the slab on the, on the ground floor. So there's uh, two ways to do that. Either I just start typing in the, in the grid, let's call this foundation, and that adds a, a new takeoff item to the list. As you can see, the takeoff element type is empty. It is, um, it is not defined yet, and there's zero elements that have been assigned to it. What I want to do is assign an element to that takeoff item. I select the takeoff item, and when I move my cursor to the 3D view, it changes into a paintbrush. And with the paintbrush, I can then select items in the model to assign them to the selected takeoff item. Let's do that with the ground floor slab. I click on that. And as you can see, it immediately highlights and the number of elements in the foundation takeoff item goes to one. What we'll also see is that the element type of the selected uh, of the, the takeoff item is automatically set to the first selected element. So that is a slab. And that means that the quantity calculation algorithm for the slab element was run in this case. And these are all the quantities that we extract for that. If I want to change the slab uh, to another element type, so let's say I'm not happy uh, that being a slab, but I want it to be a beam, I just select that from the uh, drop-down menu and go to uh, the beam rectangular. That means that the um, quantity calculation algorithms are run again, and the office tries to extract the quantity specific for beam elements. Um, from that slab element. For some of the properties that failed, it could not determine what the length is going, was, uh, could not determine what the reference site surface area was because there is no reference site that can be recognized in, in a slab. Um, so that is indicated with a, uh, a notification symbol, uh, a, a warning triangle icon in, in the takeoff item. Let's change that back to a, a slab to get the correct list of quantities again. What I also want to do is um, add a new takeoff item for, for these walls over here. 
and so I'll call those exterior walls and repeat the uh, the painting process. At any time, I can activate the navigation tools and I hit Escape to go back to painting mode. There we go. Now we got three elements. Um, from here, uh, from the takeoff item, or from the takeoff manager, I can also right-click on an item. Again, that opens the um, applicable functions available uh, for, for that piece of uh, content in, in the current view. And I can select isolate uh, to, to view exactly those four rectangular beams. Uh, when I go to a different takeoff item, uh, the, uh, the full model is restored again. A bit more permanent filter uh, can be um, activated by using the, the filtering panel uh, to the right side of the screen. I can filter by model, uh, which uh, in this case doesn't make too much sense because there's only uh, one model. Uh, I can filter by location and by layer, uh, which shows all the uh, layers that I have in my model. By type, shows all the available uh, element types and by manual selection, uh, which adds uh, the, um, uh, the, the currently selected elements uh, to, the, um, uh, to the selection panel. So if I had uh, my elements selected in the model, I would click Add Selected, and then I could filter those out in, uh, in my current view. And so let's uh, open the Location tab and just filter out the third and the second story. I place check marks. Uh, for those uh, those items, and I want to isolate those, uh, so I select the isolate from the three available options here. Hit apply, and that only shows me the the, the second and the third floors now. If I want to restore that view, I just hit the reset all filters view, click apply again, and I'm back to the original view. That concludes the uh, takeoff. I see I have one item left, which is review default quantities by location. So let's go back to office. Uh, what we worked in so far is the, uh, the takeoff model workflow item. To review how the quantities were extracted by location, uh, I select the manage takeoff workflow item, which opens a grid uh, with vertically uh, the um, takeoff items that I have. And horizontally, I have uh, my locations. As soon as I expand uh, one of the one or more of the takeoff items, I can see where in the project uh, my quantities exist at the moment. And when we continue in this uh, in this session, uh, we'll expand this location structure uh, by adding subnotes, by adding uh, zones, so that the location structure lends itself uh, for use of the quantities in uh, in the location-based schedule. Well, I have a question. I was hoping you could explain the difference between what Vico calls construction caliber quantities and what we might normally see as design quantities. Um, typical quantities extracted from uh, BIM applications include um, surface area uh, for a column, as an example. Uh, but that will contain the top and bottom surface area of that column. And you don't want to have that included if you want to calculate the amount of formwork. Uh, same thing goes for walls. And in a wall, we also have a difference between reference side surface area and opposite reference side surface area, which helps you to calculate, for example, the finishes of a wall. Uh, not possible to get that quantity from a BIM application. Uh, is possible to get in the office, and therefore is a construction caliber quantity. OK. And are there any particular formats that this data can be uh, can be used in? Um, as in output? Yeah. You can uh, store your uh, extracted quantities um, in uh, using the uh, reporting engine. Uh, so you can customize the way that, that looks. And as soon as you generate a report, you can save it as a PDF file, as a Word document, or as an Excel spreadsheet making it possible to also edit that outside of the vehicle office environment. Okay. 